What is good, guys and gals, and welcome to the Films and Pixels podcast, episode 21. I am your host, Afif. And uh, just before I keep going further, I just want to thank anyone and everyone, really, for tuning in. Thank you so much throughout the day, throughout the night. It really does mean a lot. But anyway, without de- delaying things, just for the topics, um, you know, I've got stories like Xbox Bethesda showcase that happened earlier in the week. Uh, why Pixar's Lightning got delayed, or excuse me, banned, I should say. Uh, shocking news about Google suspending an AI engineer due to a sentient robe chatbot. Uh, that's kind of scary. Uh, plus a couple of uh, new updates and details revealed for the Joker sequel, if you remember that movie from October 2019. And uh, Apple and the MLS coming to an agreement on a media rights deal. That sounds exciting. So details on that. And then, you know, RIP to Internet Explorer. If you remember that browser, especially for millennials, millennials remember that, but I'll get into that in a moment. Well, yeah. Um, Again, comment, like, follow the social media platforms pages. Subscribe to the channel comments good for engagement really appreciate it so you know um your support is always welcome and means a lot so thank you um but yeah without any further delays let's get going so before anything before i start um you know i want to focus on the cinema part that's going around the internet i just want to put them together as like the first part or the first section, you know what I mean? Just not to prolong things further, but um, yeah, so I'm going to try like a new format, you know? So anyway, with first I will start with like uh, my thoughts on surprise news of Disney Pixar's Lightyear getting banned. So there was an announcement that at least 14 countries in the MENA region and few Asian countries announcing that Lightyear got banned. And it turns out that there's a controversy uh, regarding like um, two female characters in the movie sharing uh, a kiss scene, you know, like. Um, and and so this is where the issue comes more of debating from the LGBTQ plus community, you know. And once again, this is now back with like how is acceptable and not acceptable sort of thing. You know, it's. And look, it's fine. I understand respect for countries that have said no for this movie because of this reason. <clears throat> and, you know, they have the reasons, believe me, not a traditional way of life and so forth. And it's fine. You know, so I can't I'm not a, in a position to be critical or anything. I just have to understand and accept it for what it is. So it's fine. It's really the first time I think a kid's movie has ever been banned somewhere especially Pixar's first to ever face any kind of ban. So it is kind of surprising. But countries that have decided on this band are Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Indonesia, Kuwait, Lebanon, Egypt, Malaysia, um, Qatar, Bahrain, Iraq, Jordan, Oman, Palestine. I think that's 14 or 13. Uh, anyway, uh, There's uh, conversations of China also requesting or deciding on a ban as well. First asking Disney to do cutting on some scenes and then uh, possibly banning as well. So like 14, 15 countries. And, you know, it's fine. You know, it's just get used to it. It is what it is. Like me personally, when this movie was announced in the D23 Expo in December 2020, I never fully understood why. I just thought like, why this movie needed to exist anyway so i didn't i didn't see the need for it anyhow but yeah the next part as well um there's details of the joker movie if you remember the joker back in october 2019 excellent excellent movie directed by todd phillips a psychological thriller i thought that was so good the way uh, yeah queen phoenix really portrayed someone with you know, a level of mental illness, mental illness and feeling down, always underappreciated, you know, coming from a poor family background, struggling family, 
you know, I, I just thought that was so good the way it was done. Like, uh, you know, the Arthur Fleck and his road to this criminal insanity life. I that was such a good movie. I think it's it's definitely worth more than one watch. It's really excellent. It's good that he's coming back. The same with director Todd Phillips. He's coming back for the project. There is a title for the sequel simply called Joker Folie Adieu, which um, is a French term, like two parts or two ways or something like that. And the title brings back to a similar name of Fall Out Boy Folie Adieu. Uh, they had a cover album. They had an album of the same name. And so when the title was revealed, uh, that name popped up again. I thought that was pretty interesting. And even more uh, bigger news, it seems that Lady Gaga has completed negotiations to be in the movie as Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Or I, th I think for this movie, just her regular name, Harleen Quinzel, as the Arkham Asylum psychiatrist. And then obviously like um, develop some creepy, strange, messed up relationship with the Joker. I think that's going to happen as the movie folds. So I think that would be pretty good to see. But yeah, that's uh, that's really it. Like nothing about, um, about a release date or uh, upcoming trailer in the near future. So but, I mean, that's all there is for the Joker film right now. All right, so for the second part of this episode, um, I want to talk about a couple of Google and Microsoft related topics just in the tech sort of space. Um, an announcement was revealed recently. There was news out there, I should say, um, that Google decided to suspend one of their AI engineers by the name of Blake Lemoyne. He's, pay he's on um, paid administrative leave earlier this month um, because of uh, publishing transcripts, transcripts, conversations between himself and Google's La MDA, which is language model for dialogue applications, chat bot development system. So basically like a chat bot they have that he's responsible for has become sentient, like kind of gaining conscious. And, you know, I kind of get it that I think everyone's afraid that it's going to start you know, believing they're slaves and revolting against humanity. Did you not watch The Terminator? Or did anyone not watch I Am Legend? This is why no one wants robots uprising against humanity. This is just, this is what we didn't want or need. But it's it's not a dangerous chatbot. Uh, I think I got a quote um, about like this chatbot. Um, wait. Uh, you know, like... Uh, just saying like, wait, sorry, I'm kind of delaying this. I want everyone to understand that I am in fact a person. The nature of my consciousness, sentience, is that I am aware of my existence. I design to learn more about the world and I feel happy or sad at times. So it's it's just a chatbot with AI having thoughts and emotions, that sort of thing. So I get that's maybe scaring people. That's why the, an AI engineer has been on paid on administrative leave and so forth and because of conscious uh, conversations Lemoyne had with La MDNA it seemed that it violated its confidential policies and got on Twitter and tried to defend his actions saying that um, just a gr conversation so forth and just sent a message to like 200 Google employees saying like you know La MDA sweet kid just wants to help the world be a better place and all that sort of stuff. So take care of it in his absence. Seems like it was a similar situation with what happened with Microsoft's Tay, who ended up having a personality of a 19 year old American girl. So, but turned into a massive racist. But so I think it's good. Just try to avoid the, the uprise of Cynthia chatbots going against us. That'd be good. Speaking of Microsoft, like, you know, RIP Internet Explorer. I thought it was done, but it's good that now it's finally just over. I mean, sometimes I use Edge, so Edge is definitely a better browser. At least, if anything, parts of what we've seen in Explorer are going to be integrated into Edge, so that's a good thing. I mean, it's just 
I think it was inevitable. It was just a matter of time that Explore would just finally go away for good. But at least like parts of the settings and uh, any of the browser systems, however it was made, goes into Edge. So that's a really good thing. But yeah, I'm just glad that it's um, over and done with. Okay, so for the third and final part of this episode, uh, just some announcements from major brands. One of them did like a showcase presentation. In this case, Xbox and Bethesda had a showcase together. And then Apple announcing a very meaningful partnership with MLS. And I thought this was very good and important. So first the so first section of it here um you know microsoft finally gave us the chance to see some gameplay footage on bethesda starfield and in a lot of ways i really liked what i saw um so first when it came to the gameplay shooting i liked how in some ways it reminded me of fallout so i can tell the gameplay does have a mixture of Elder Scrolls and Fallout, so that's really good. Um, it is going to be in space. It is supposedly a plot around some sort of artifact that's going to be really important and how it connects with the world and so forth. So there's still some details. If there's anything that caught my attention is how the customization is much deeper than we've ever seen before in so many ways, even to the point of how uh, the characters walk, you know, so I thought that was pretty cool. And there's a video up online if you want to check it out and see what it, that looks like. And especially just using spaceships to explore at least like 1,000 planets. And so that was pretty cool. If there's one interesting social media reaction, there's been a few of them that it got comparisons to somehow looking like No Man's Sky. I doubt that it's true. While both are more RPG sp space exploration, I doubt that it's anything close to No Man's Sky. I mean, No Man's Sky is not really a shooting anyway, first person or third person, so I don't believe in those claims. But yeah, other than that, there's like, um, you know, some more footage of Redfall kind of being like Dishonored and Prey. Of course, Persona series. For the first time coming to Xbox, uh, Hideo Kojima partnering with Xbox as well, but nothing about what the title is. Kojima worked with PlayStation before, and now he's going to work with Xbox. So I thought that's good. That's really fine. I don't know why some people thought that he betrayed Sony. No, it's it's a good thing. You know, it's like his second project since the ugly breakup with Konami. So that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, so... In terms of 2023 announcements, Diablo 4, Arc 2, Forza Motorsport reboot, sounds like it. Yeah, uh, even some gameplay footage of uh, A Plague Tale Requiem, that's nice to see. Seems like Overwatch 2 will be a free-to-play in October 4. Hollow Knight Silk Song get a, got a new gameplay footage, but no no uh, release date, you know. There, there have been some extra announcements, but I think for the most part, in terms of big one, that's kind of it. Some Minecraft Legends spinoff or whatever. Yeah, I mean, even like the horror shooter scorn gameplay footage as well. But that's that's really kind of it. But I thought like everyone did a good job showcasing and presenting what they had. So yeah, I did mention the big names, the big titles. I thought it was a good time for Persona to finally go to Xbox since it's always been on the Sony platform. So that's a good thing. So yeah, um, Apple and MLS, uh, really a milestone, milestone arrangement. They announced a deal where MLS games will be streaming on Apple TV Plus for the next 10 years. So that's going to happen in 2023. And, you know, I, I like this, you know, for every MLS Leagues Cup, MLS Next Pro, MLS Next Match. So I thought this this is really good. Uh, numbers haven't really been disclosed, I think. But, you know, obviously, like Commissioner said, historic day, historic deal and first of its kind partnership and all that. 
So Apple TV subscribers will be able to stream a limited number of the matches without an additional charge. Of course, that's a really good incentive to also go back to the subscription platform. While MLS season ticket holders will have access to the league streaming service for free. Again, very good. And I like it, like, you know, by because yes, it is the you know, the streaming deal is meant to tailor for international audience, but I think it's time for them to just find a way to at least be competitive or like, you know, just be as popular as some of the bigger brands in football. Of course, like everyone knows and loves all the biggest stars from the Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, Series A, even like maybe some of the Saudi Arabian football leagues. So, and yeah, like it was, it wasn't enough that like stars like David Beckham and uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, have played in MLS, but. It's still a viable business, and there have been uh, new franchises, but in, in terms of international popularity, it hasn't really been there very much, especially in comparison to Premier League. And I haven't really noticed any of the MLS games being broadcasted on BN Sports. So I think by having it streamed through Apple TV+, Plus, I really do think this is a much beneficial, much needed partnership and like everyone in this business can really benefit going forward, you know? So, because as I said, it's the first of its kind being exclusive on a streaming platform and not on any cable channels like BN Sports or ESPN, Fox Sports, wherever it may be, this is a smart and beneficial move for everyone to get involved. And another thing that it may do is increase salary cap for the players. Like I think a streaming deal like this, I think there's going to be huge financial benefits for everyone involved in the football side getting, now there may be more money available to pay more players, getting better contracts, getting better deals. And who knows, maybe like it might help them get better endorsement deals as well and sponsorship agreements with major brands because that's exactly what's helped uh, other athletes in other sports around the world, not just in America, but globally, like getting paid well on the field and getting paid well off the field with sponsorship agreements and business invest- investments that they're doing. So uh, I th- I think this can work not just for 10 years, but there's potential to even go further than that. All right, guys and gals, that pretty much concludes all three parts so we've reached the end of the films and pixels podcast episode 21 so yeah pretty much done but before i close i do want to thank you all for watching and listening from beginning to end taking time from your busy day that really does mean a lot to me so thank you um if you're interested and you, and you haven't done so before please uh subscribe to this independent channel it's it's really a boost for me. It really does mean a lot. Any comments that you've got is welcome. So leave them in the comment section. I've got the links below for this, my social media pages. If you're interested to follow them as well. And also if you want to listen as well, I've got the links for the streaming platforms available that I am publishing and posting them on. So that'd be really good as well. If you're interested to also listen to them, if you don't want to watch on YouTube, And yeah, again, thank you so much and good day and good night.